Next, let's talk about structural independence, but I'm not going to present this in the way that the IRC presents it. Going back to the origin of the townhouse concept, it was single-family homes with less than a five-foot fire separation distance, and thus they both have rated exterior walls. So we can have one rated wall on the house of fire origin that burns through and collapses completely, while the other wall remains standing and protecting the neighboring house and you get a combined two hours of protection. So similarly, when townhouse units are separated by the double wall design, the walls must be structurally independent of each other. One wall can take an hour to burn through and collapse, while the second wall remains standing, and you get that combined two hours of protection. But in a common wall design, you have one two hour rated wall that gives you all the protection or you have one one hour rated wall with sprinklers in the building. This is an equivalent. So common wall design becomes an exception to the requirement for structural independence. Now another exception is the foundation beneath common or double walls. It can be shared by both neighboring units. In the 2021 IRC, another exception was added that applies to the double wall method. Structural independence is not required when the building is fire sprinklered. Of course, when you fire sprinkler the building, you don't have to do two one hour walls anymore. You could go with that one one hour common wall. Carrying on, the next exception is for non-structural wall and roof coverings. Siding and shingles can tie these walls together and run across them. Now the next two exceptions are where this section really becomes a bit of a monster. After 20 years of code changes, a few of the pieces just don't seem to fit together right. I'll bring up this section for you to see what I'm talking about. We see that for foundations, the exception refers to exterior walls and common walls. The term exterior walls is from decades ago. The IRC now refers to that method as the double wall method. Now notice the part about the sheathing. It refers only to the common wall, not the double wall. And the part about roof flashing also refers only to common wall. But this really doesn't make any sense because the common wall method as a method of separation, it's a complete and entire exception altogether. So I believe the most appropriate interpretation of exceptions two and four are that what it's really speaking to is the separation wall. And since the common wall is already an exception, I suppose it's speaking to the double wall. Now, you may not get the agreement from everybody in how I'm interpreting this. I think this is probably a good subject for the 2027 IRC code development hearings. Let's move on though to two family dwellings.